Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're looking at the OPI California Dreaming Collection for summer 2017. I did get this collection from polishpick.com. In the last OPI video I did, I talked a lot about this retailer who was going to give you guys a super great deal, including free shipping. That guy actually ended up being totally dishonest and didn't give you guys the deal that he promised me. So I did put in annotations in that video to disregard that promise of free shipping. And I actually, I'm not even gonna recommend that you guys go try to look for them there. Look for them at polishpick.com and they're not currently on transdesign.com but possibly soon. Anyway, at polishpick.com they are $5.25 a piece and if you're buying the whole set you get an even further discount. So we're gonna go ahead and get into live swatching of these polishes. If you are new on my channel, that's what we do here because I think that you benefit greatly from seeing how polish swatches and not just knowing what the look of it is. Although some of these polishes are really pretty, we have all creams except for two metallics. One is much more metallic looking than the other, but everything else is creams and we have a lot of reds, pinks, and neutrals here. I believe this is a limited release collection so at least on polishpick.com, once they are sold out there, they're gone. She's not going to be restocking them. So if there's anything you really want here, make sure you head on over and snag it. So I'm going to start out with the three pinks. Here are the shades. We have like a bubble gum and a raspberry jelly and then something kind of right in the middle. So let's start with the darkest one. And this one actually surprised me that it was a more jelly formula. And what that means is that there's just like more base and less pigment so that it looks a little bit squishier on the nail a little bit less opaque. There's just a lot less pigment than in a cream polish. So this first one is a beautiful raspberry color and it is called This Is Not Wine Country and wine is spelled like like a child whining and it is really beautiful. I am going to show you three coats of this. A lot of these polishes I feel like actually benefit from three coats. You can do two coats but you're gonna be looking at your nail and seeing maybe a little bit of streakiness. Also, I did notice that all of these did dry very beautifully glossy and pretty typical OPI style, so I did really appreciate that about them. So this first polish is This Is Not Wine Country. pink in the collection is this more medium pink. It's still very strong, very saturated, lots of pigment here. This is called GPS I Love You. This has a pretty typical cream formula for OPI. This is great at two coats. It swatches lovely. So yeah, this one, although pink isn't necessarily my favorite, um, I think this is still a really nicely formulated polish. So if you don't already have something like this, you might really enjoy it. True to my channel, we are gonna be doing a dupes and comparisons session at the end of the video. If you're not interested in that, that's why I put it at the end so that you don't have to stay around and watch it if you don't want to. But if you're wondering to yourself, hmm, how does that compare to that other polish I'm thinking of in OPI's line? You might be able to see that at the end of this video and know if you actually need to spend your money on this polish or if it's already so similar to another OPI that you don't really need this. So. Definitely, you can look forward to seeing that at the end of the video. And the third pink in the collection, like I said, is this lighter pink, but it's not super, super light. It's more of a bubblegum pink. It's not really, you know, getting anywhere near, near ballet slipper or anything. This is called Malibu Pier Pressure, and pier is spelled like a pier on the water. This one applies nicely, just like the rest. And yeah, it has a great formula. It's a pretty basic pink, though. on to this soft kind of corally peach in the collection and I really did enjoy this one. This is called Time for a Napa and it's just it's just a very delightful shade. It's kind of warm. Um, does feel very summer appropriate to me. I liked how this applied. It was nice and easy so yeah this is Time for a Napa.
The next polish actually has peach in the name, but for me, this is much more orange. I'm sure out there in the grocery store, you can probably find a peach that's kind of similar to this color, but this looks very, very orange to me, and it's actually a really pretty shade. It's called Santa Monica Beach Peach, and this applies nicely into coats, and it's not really like Halloween orange, so that's nice. It's not too, too typical orange. There's a little bit of something in there that's kind of taking it a little bit softer, but yeah, I thought that this was pretty. It's going to be similar to some things in my collection, but probably not dead on, so I like that. Um, the only thing that was throwing me off is that they was called, you know, peach, but in any case, it is a pretty polish. Okay, let's look at the two reds, and one is more of like it's almost like going towards an orangey coral, but compared to the orange, this one looks more like a red. So let's start with the lighter one. This one, um, it has a lot of white in it. It's kind of like a tomato red with a lot of white. And when I say a lot, you know, of course. I mean a lot more than like this, for example. So this is called Me, My Selfie, and I, and this is nice. It applies great. It's smooth and easy, just like the rest of the creams. They do have their cream formula really down pat. Um, some of their creams surprised me, like this one. It needed three coats for such strong pigmentation that this seemed to have. I just saw a little bit of streakiness, but I do think that this is a pretty color, and you will see me compare this to a few things later on in the video. The next polish in the collection is this beautiful, almost blood red. It's making me think of that because it's a jelly polish, so this is going to look much more sheer than the polish that I just showed you, for example. This is called To the Mouse House We Go, so a Disneyland reference here in the collection. And this is pretty, I mean, I'm pretty sure they already have a polish just like this and in your collection somewhere I'm sure you have a very jelly red. I like jelly reds because they are one of the jellies that I actually enjoy wearing where it's not completely opaque. I am gonna show you three coats on this though so you can watch me build it up. So this is to the mouse house we go, exclamation point. All right, let's move on to some neutral things. So they gave us um, like a straight up neutral, then we have a definitely rosy neutral, and then we have this more beige shade in the bottom that is very nearly my skin tone because I'm so ghostly, but not quite. I have quite a bit of pink in my skin anyway. I just thought it was funny as I was putting this up to myself, I thought, well, these are really nobody's, hardly anybody's nude shade. So we're gonna call them neutrals. Okay, so um, the first one, let's look at this one. This is what I have on my nails today and I'm actually really, really enjoying it. This actually, when I have it on, makes me think more peach also than the one that has peach in the name. It's just a very, very light beigey peach. So this is called Barking Up the Wrong Sequoia. And it's just a very easy to wear calming shade. It's just, I don't know, it's, I'm really, really enjoying it. I put it on yesterday and I just decided not to take it off. I was like, nope, I'm done. I just want to be done for now and just leave this on. So definitely enjoyed it. This is probably one of my top picks out of the collection. Now whether this is already very similar to something in OPI's line, we shall soon find out. top pick out of the collection for me is this other neutral. This is a rosy neutral and I love this. This is exactly like the lippy that's really on trend right now. It's just a neutral with a little pinch of rose in it. And this is called Excuse Me Big Sir, also with an exclamation point. And it's just really beautiful. Again, it's an easy to wear, just like this neutral here. Really easy if, if you just want it instead of warm like this one. This one is slightly cool. So... Yeah, I was really enjoying these two neutrals. They are not novelties, but they are really good for what they are, so I did really enjoy this. The last of the creamy neutrals is this lighter kind of beigey bone shade, and this is called Feeling Frisco, which I really enjoy that name. And this is good at three coats. You guys know OPI is pretty well known for their very light neutrals. They have a lot of really great cult classics at this point. And this one is pretty good. It didn't knock my socks off, but I mean, it was, it was good. It was fine. It's not the shade that I love wearing a lot, but I can see myself definitely putting this 
on from time to time. So like I said, I am going to show you three coats of this. So this is Feeling Frisco. Okay, we have two metallic shades to round out this collection. One is like a copper, almost like a copper penny, but it's it's not quite as orange. It's between a copper and a bronze. And then we have this last polish, which is actually probably one of the most unique polishes in the collection. So we'll save that to last. Okay, so this coppery bronze shade is called Sweet Carmel Sunday. This is an easy, again, an easy to wear metallic for sure. A really great option for summer. is isn't really astounded, but applied nicely at two coats. So if you don't have anything like this, you might really enjoy it. So this is Sweet Carmel Sunday. like a sweet caramel sundae. I mean, mm. the first few times I read that, I was pronouncing it sweet caramel sundae, but it's for caramel. So this last polish, when I saw this online, I thought, oh man, just another gray metallic. Okay. But this is actually a gray brown. So this, that's why this is the most unique thing in here because I have polishes that are similar to this, but when I was trying these all on, this is the one that I thought, oh, okay. I can't think of anything in my head that's like, okay, I already own that exact shade. I like that it has this little hint of brown in it. So it actually, to me, like actually looks a little bit purpley, which is kind of fun. It's, it's interesting. You'll have to decide what it looks like on your skin tone, probably. So anyway, this is called Don't Take Yosemite for Granite, which is pretty darn cute. And it applies really nicely at one to two coats. It's a pretty great formula, really, really opaque. And it's a kind of metallic where it's like a barely there metallic. It just has a little bit of metallic pigment. So I did really enjoy this. So this is one of my favorites as well. Okay, so if you're gonna twist my arm and make me pick favorites, <laughs> I will go ahead and let you know. So I really did enjoy this brownie gray charcoal called Don't Take Yosemite for Granite. I recommend that. I did also enjoy this peachy neutral here on my hands, and this is called Barking Up the Wrong Sequoia. On my nails, excuse me, not on my hands. I have it in my hands. The other one is this rosy neutral called Excuse Me, A Big Sir. That was my other top pick. And then this orange called Santa Monica Beach Peach. I did also really like this, even though I don't love orange. For me, these were the standouts. So if you are interested to see how these polishes compare to other polishes in OPI's line. Um, let me go ahead and be clear, I don't own every single OPI polish, so it is not possible for me to make every single comparison for you, but I'm gonna go off what looks most similar in the bottle and what most looks similar on the nail and show those to you side by side. If you've been with me for a while, you can know what style to expect. In the video right here, we're gonna look at things side by side and I'm gonna let you know what I think is the closest. So if you're not interested in that, thank you guys for stopping by for this video and let me know in the comments what your favorites were. And if you are interested in the dupes, then let's get to that right now. All right guys, so first off, I do wanna mention now because I don't yet have a label maker, I have to use a white background here and it sometimes washes out the colors just a little bit. But let's go ahead and get started. This is that first deep raspberry shade. This is not wine country. Now while this is a jelly formula, jelly to crelly, the two most similar colors were both from last year's fall collection, Madam President and OPI by popular vote. Madam President is probably, probably the closer but um, they're neither of them the same kind of formula. So essentially, I don't really have anything exactly like this is not wine country, but these were kind of close colors so you can see the color comparisons. Next up we have GPS I Love You, and here you can see this is tinting this more like a red shade instead of the pink that it really is. I'm sorry about that, I tried to color correct it. But for the purposes of this, you can see which things are most similar, even if they aren't looking quite as pink. So we have all of these, um, these three things. I actually pulled out a whole bunch, but these were the ones that were not too dark, not too light. So we have Hey Baby, Apartment for Two, and Mad for Madness Sake that are pretty darn close. 
Um, I did really like the formula on GPS I Love You, so if you don't already have one of these other three, you might want to pick it up. Um, but if you aren't crazy for pinks and you already have one of these other three, then I'm not really sure it's necessary. Next we have Malibu Peer Pressure, and this is a really beautiful pink. I actually really ended up liking this color a lot. Even though it wasn't quite as good a formula as the last pink, I still think it's really, really pretty. So anyway, these colors are pretty close to it. Flip flops and crop tops um, is, was really, really close. Susie Nail's New Orleans is a little bit lighter, a little bit more wide in it. Um, but for me, they would do since I don't collect a ton of pinks. So for me, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I already have some pretty close stuff. This one's probably not super necessary either. Okay, Santa Monica Beach Peach, one of my top picks, just because it was a really pretty formula and it is a really pretty color. It doesn't make me think, I mean, it's definitely not neon like Juice Bar Hopping is at the bottom. That's the most similar in color that I own, but that one's a, a jelly kind of neon shade. And then Atomic Orange, which is actually a little bit closer to one of the red shades in the collection than this one, but I just wanted to compare it. For you because I really don't have that many orange orange shades from OPI and I had a few more but they weren't close to this at all so I just wanted to show you the ones that look the most similar in the bottle but like I said I think this is one of my top picks because it has not really anything super comparable for me from OPI already. Alright next up we have Time for a Napa which was kind of that corally peach shade. This is making it look a lot more it's a lot more passionate here <laughs> than it looked in person. In any case, this is a really pretty shade. Um, these two things are pretty similar to it. They're not exact dupes by any means, but they were close. Um, SPF 30 is a really lovely color. I really like that one. If you guys remember, I compared that to three of the Ulta or to one of the Ulta exclusives that came out for their spring summer collection. Anyway, these two are pretty close, um, so I don't know, I guess if you already have peachy corals, you probably don't need the one from this collection, even though it was very pretty. Okay, on to me, my selfie, and I. As you can see, I put Atomic Orange in here too, because it's actually closer to this polish than the orange in the collection. These are all my orangey reds. It's definitely an orange red. There's not any coolness in it. These are all my orange reds that have white in it. And I have a lot. So I wouldn't say that any of them are exact, exact dupes, but look how similar these all look, you guys. So I don't think it's a necessary polish, especially since I ended up needing three coats to make it absolutely streak-free. So my recommendation to you this on this one specifically is if you have any of these here, you for sure don't need it. Okay, to the mouse house we go. So these are all of my jelly reds at least the top three are and having a big head day was one of the closest reds that I have that's not a jelly if you're looking for something that's not a jelly formula even though as you can see it's darker than to the mouse house but that has also it's attributed to the fact that mouse house is a jelly so it's just even at three coats it wasn't extremely opaque so red hot rio fashion bow and to the mouse house all jellies as you can see there they're all different um fashion bow has even more orange in it and um, Red Hot Rio is darker but not an exact dupe at least in my collection from OPI as of yet but I feel like I would probably turn to one of the other reds in my collection over this one if I was trying to save a little bit of money I would be able to excuse it with that. Okay so this one was a favorite of mine, Wrong Sequoia. It's very similar to a great opportunity. I would say close enough that if you want to save a few bucks you could just wear Opportunity instead. Freedom of Peach, I wanted to put it in here because Sequoia is such a peachy shade that I wanted to see them side by side, but as you can see, it's a lot darker. Also, I put Humidity in here as well because they are very close in color. It's just, you know, one has a lot of shimmer, obviously, but they're pretty close. Another favorite of mine, this is Excuse Me Big Sur. I really loved this shade, and it made me very happy that I don't have a polish exactly like it from OPI. So Seashells by the Seashore is pretty close. It just has like um, a lustry formula, um, but it is very close. It's a little bit darker though, and Creme de la Kremlin is also very close, a shade I really, really enjoy, um, but it's darker. So anyway, yay, that made me happy that I had one that I really could say I didn't have anything quite like it. 
Next up we have Feeling Frisco and here I have a bunch of things to show you because this is an area in OPI's core line or whatever you will call it that they just have a ton of polishes like this. So Pale to the Chief is very, very similar. Tiramisu for Two is very similar, just has a little bit less yellow. Do you take Layaway? Again, same line here, it's just a tiny bit darker. And then on the other end of the spectrum we have Be There and a Prosecco, which is lighter, obviously. Um, I think if you have Pale to the Chief, you don't need the one from this collection. If you, for some reason, collect these kinds of colors just because you love every subtlety of it, I don't think any of these are exact dupes for you. So you could have a reason to go ahead and pick this up because they are not dupes. But for me, um, Pale to the Chief is similar enough. Alright, so these polishes are all really similar looking, right? They're all pretty close in base color, but obviously, as we discussed before, Yosemite for Granite has that silver, it's a silver shimmer, but it's it's kind of linear, so that's what made it look kind of like a metallic. Anyway, I wanted to show you Politically Polished is basically like the same base color, but it's a cream. I love that shade. So if you liked this year's, this granite color, but you don't want the shimmer, go for Politically Polished. Um, my Private Jet is really similar as well, but it has tiny little holographic specks instead of the silver shimmer. So that would be a really good option if you don't like that um, shimmer lustry look. And then also as well, Warm Me Up is really close as well, but it's a little bit more brown, but it also does have some lustry quality to it. So that's really similar as well. It just has just a touch more brown instead of the gray. So last up in the collection, we have Sweet Caramel Sunday, and this was that shade that's in between a bronze and a copper. It's not super coppery. Um, you know, most coppers look a lot more orange than Caramel Sunday looks. I wanted to compare for you to Worth a Pretty Penne because in OPI's line, it's the most similar thing. In fact, all of the other metallics that I have, I really don't have an OPI metallic that is this bronzy copper shade at all. So Worth a Pretty Penne is close. It's more, um, when it comes to metallics, it's the metallic where you can see all the little particles rather than the kind that Carmel is where you can see the lines. It's the brush stroke kind. I don't usually tend to hold on to polishes like this because they're just not my favorite. I would rather wear the kind of finish that Worth a Pretty Penne is. So I actually didn't even have anything from other brands to show you, um, you know, anything super similar either because I just don't hold on to them because I don't prefer them. So anyway, this is a long explanation to say that I think that this is a unique polish in OPI's line, at least for what I own, like I did mention before, I don't have every OPI polish, um, but it was unique for me. That being said, I didn't really care for this polish. I would wear, I would choose Worth a Pretty Penny like every single time over this color. That's just me personally. So anyway. Now you've seen these side by side and the dupes and comparisons are done. All right, you guys, so that was it. I hope you found it helpful. As always, that is basically the whole mission of my channel. I'm just trying to help you guys out, let you see what's similar, let you see how they swatch so you know what kind of formula to expect. And yeah, I think that's gonna be it for today. So thank you guys so much. If you didn't already leave me a comment before letting me know what your favorite was, let me know in the comment section below what your favorite was or if you were just totally not feeling this collection, what do you guys think? Let me know all your thoughts down below and if you did find this video helpful go ahead and subscribe it doesn't cost you anything and you can also give me a thumbs up so that i know that you enjoy this type of video thanks you guys i will see you back for the next video i hope until then take care bye